NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. RNA Screen Printing Newcastle is the place to go for signs, shirts, hats, vinyl lettering, embroidery, magnets, vehicle lettering, banners, window decals, and they can put your design on many items. They have decals for vehicles and signs for all your advertising needs. Great selection of sizes and styles of regular or glitter t-shirts. RNA can iron on a logo while you wait and can do any school logo. RNA Screen Printing, 1217 Moravia Street, Newcastle, open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Call 724-652-22. Today's program was furnished by a grant from the Beanery Depot in Delhi featuring coffee, made to order subs, and snacks. The Beanery Depot in Delhi in Mahoningtown. Welcome to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. I'm Alex DeLaverson, and I hope... Philadelphia Freedom. Oh, Shine man. on me. <laughs> well, I I'll tell you what. Anyone that knows me and my passion for uh, Pittsburgh sports also knows how much I can dislike um, Philadelphia sports teams and New England sports teams. So, Angelo, i got to be honest with you. I didn't watch the game. Now, I didn't want to watch. Now, let me even, like, explain... I don't, for Philadelphia, first of all, I don't like the Phillies. I don't like the Flyers. The 76ers are like, okay. okay. Only because of my deep hatred of Cleveland. <laughs> okay. And as far as the Eagles, they get an okay pass, too. I just can't figure them out because I think their uniforms are really a pukey green. You know, I don't. I think their uniforms are kind of sharp, honestly. Yeah, my wife did too. So, um, now, all that being said, my point of all the Super Bowls, of everything going on, has been proved out beautifully with the team from the city of brotherly love. First of all, their whole game plan was very much a Pittsburgh game plan. Mm -hmm. They ran the ball through short passes. They ran the ball. They threw short passes. And my whole contention that the defensive backs for New England are the reason Brady looks good Sorry, Tom Thumb, but, you know, he was all thumbs. It was great. They had two halfback passes. The Philadelphia quarterback caught his. Yeah. And Thumbelini dropped his. Brady missed his. I you know, uh, okay. But the last plays of the game were crystal clear. Mm -hmm. New England's up one. Philly drives down. And scores. Now, uh, the NFL, they should have an apology going out to the Steelers. Because yeah, I saw that touch here, was the, here was the catch. And here I'm going to take three or four or five steps. I'm going to get hit. And then you're going to say, did I have control of the ball? You know what? NFL, not for long if you keep making calls like this. Okay, so they ruled a touchdown. Now, that was the first play that I contend that that was the first time I didn't see New England get the call. And, and, and this is just my opinion. 
Now, it was in a position where you're, you're up five, and if you go for two, you'll be up seven. If you kick a field goal, you're up six. No matter what, you have to go for two. Here comes the, the, the Eagles. He rolls to the right. Now, I never favored this camera angle, but now I love it. You sure you don't want to take a seat, man? <laughs> up, the, up behind the camera is the drone. Please watch this. Here's the ball being released by the quarterback. Here's the wide receiver making the cut. Here's the New England defensive back interfering with the guy before the ball gets there. And did we get a call? Nope. Nothing called. He gave Brady back the ball with time to move down the field. Now, here was the key. The kickoff sent the ball deep. Bill, I'm ready to bella puke. <laughs> called his, well, we'll go with a reverse, which pinned them back because it was too deep to run the reverse. You have to have some field position. He got sm spanked deep. It was like inside the 20. I, I want to say the 10, but I'm not sure. And that forced Brady into looking miles down he had to get to Idaho to score. And the, the New England pressure hit the ball, caused the fumble, and that was, that was, that whole scenario when they, the officials make the right call and the Steeler game plan and there's only one thing that wasn't a real Steeler game plan, but was kind of, sort of. When they pitched the ball to do the sweep, and the guy came back on a reverse and threw the pass to the quarterback for a touchdown. Mm. Beautiful. Well, you know what? Here's the thing, though. I want to know why Belichick took Malcolm Butler out for... That game. Like, because oh, Mr. Sparty Pants, he said he wanted to give himself the best chance to win. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, they asked him right before the game, why did you take Malcolm Butler out? Because I wanted to give us the best chance to win. Well, how about when they asked him why is this Super Bowl different from the other ones? You know what he said? This one's in Minnesota. Which is kind of funny in a way, because he's directly, he's directly saying forget you guys. You know what? Honest to God, if you, if you look at the movie, Throw Mama from the Train, and look at Bill Belichick, they look like sisters. Uh -huh. Just my opinion, just my opinion, but hey. Well, you know, we have to start to wonder, is this going to be the end of the uh, Belichick New England era? As rumors are swirling that this could have been his last ride, and I know a lot of uh, Pittsburgh fans are happy, because at least for one more year, we got uh, six Super Bowls. But also... With the Patriots now, Tom Brady becomes the first quarterback to throw for over 500 yards and three touchdowns and lose. And the Patriots also tied the Broncos with Super Bowl losses with five. What a losing franchise, right? That might be a bit of a stretch. No, 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 not a stretch when you consider that interference was not called on the wideouts. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, but the Eagles they would the have. Game. They would have... Yeah, but it's not like. Yeah, but how about the poor ass Rams? Well, yeah, in Super Bowl One, it's happened over and over and over again, and they would have never been there if it would have been rolled a touchdown in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I don't. Know. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of changes. Gronkowski even said he might retire after this year, but uh, we'll we'll talk about that later um, but we're gonna go here to, uh, for a break and now word from our sponsors hey Angelo Parada here for 
croakers, kegs, and corks. And if that's not a mouthful, nothing is. But when you need a mouthful of that special brew, it's croakers, kegs, and corks. You know, nothing tastes better than when you make it yourself. And I do some of that brew myself quite often. I like doing it. It's a great hobby, and it's something you can do. Croakers, kegs, and corks, low crate, catered right in Union Township. Give them a try. This program furnished by the Mad Unit, Mobile Auto Detailing. See Michael Sad at the madunit.com. Funding provided by Main Street Clothiers and Tailors, Washington Street, Newcastle. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. Uh, for this segment, I kind of want to talk about uh, where this Super Bowl ranks in terms of um, prestige or legacy, if you want to call it. This is the Eagles' first Super Bowl win, and now all Philadelphia sports team, they all have a championship. And, um, look, we know we hate Philly, but... Wasn't it kind of good, though, to see a, a town that hasn't won a Super Bowl win one? Or am I, am I full of it, Angela? What do you ah, think? the key in that whole sentence was ah. Mm -hmm. The Pens have multiple. The Pirates have multiple. Might not get any more in the future, but they have multiple. As we stand in, you know, the Steelers have six. So... I personally feel that you know if I have to if I have to look at the game I'm super glad Philadelphia won only because the way New England has gotten what I think has gotten calls uh, there, there's no doubt their games were the longest of periods of time, uh, okay, longer than any of NFL game, especially as they won and after they won their first Super Bowl, okay. They've gotten repeated call after call where people questioned it, and, and, and they are the Oakland Raiders of the 2000s. Oh, interesting uh, comparison there. Yeah, spe speaking of the Raiders, I did actually see the towards the end of the game. Remember when Brady uh, got hit and it fumbled it, and everyone was talking about well, it was his arm in motion. Wouldn't that kind of be something that the play that cost New England the Super Bowl could be similar? to the first play in the tuck roll game for the Patriots against the Raiders in 2001. Remember that controversial call? Right, that's Wouldn't right. Wouldn't that be something if that's how this whole thing ends? Well, you, you, and you know, uh, once again, the Raiders, the quote, Patriots, get the call. I mean, it, it's just like, you know, go back to the Raiders. They won a game with the Holy Roller where... He was going down, he rolled the ball forward into the end zone, and the guy recovered it. Uh, okay, I, I just can't feel as though that um, New England deserves the credit they get. Okay, granted, you know, you have to drive the 60, 70 yards for the score. Okay, but when you're set up, Makes it a little bit easier. It's like uh, eating soup with a fork. Maybe you can do it, but it isn't the easiest way to go. You'd rather have a spoon. Right. right. You know? Well, you know, listen, I feel good, honestly. Potentially because this could be the end of the, you know, Brady Belichick New England dynasty. You know, that, that no, I won't but, say dynasty. Well, I guess Dynasty has to be, like, within a short amount of years. Was it like three to four? Well, this could be the end of their, you know, two decades of excellence, basically. 
And that's really what it's been. And is it a something that the Eagles were the Super Bowl and now they also have a quarterback controversy? Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. Um, you know, all I just hope this people in Philadelphia were safe last night because they were going crazy. Yeah, I don't understand that tearing down the city because you won. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess when your team hasn't won a Super Bowl, uh, maybe that's what happens. You get so, like, starved for it, but I still think that's But, uh, you know, Pittsburgh's been there before, so. Been there, done that. Yeah, they right. know how to act. Right. Um, <clears throat> but that's all for this segment. And when we come back, we'll talk, uh, we'll, we'll talk some other things, maybe not football-related. Um, but now a word from our sponsor. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. I hope all, in, all of you enjoyed our first two segments. Um, but we're going to switch gears here from football, and um, let's check in and see how our other Pittsburgh sports teams are doing. The Pittsburgh Penguins, for one. And uh, I know our uh, producer will have some thoughts on the Pirates. Um, but, Angela, what has uh, contributed to the Penguins' success these past few games? Well, I just believe that since... Since, uh, like, the end of January, they've turned it around, mm -hmm. okay, uh, they, they had wins over the Capitals, okay, they're sitting right now four games back with New Jersey and Washington. They're four games back, Washington in first, and the, Cat, and the, the Devils. Okay, just one game up on the Pens. So the Pens are in an excellent position to get back in the first place. And, you know, it's really not that late. You know, when you consider every, all things considered, in the last five games, the Pens are 4-1. and one. So that's, a, that's an encouraging sign. Well, you know, you know what I noticed, especially with hockey or you know any sport that requires multiple games, it's as of lately. If you can at least get into the playoffs, then you're fine. Like if you're riding hot going into the playoffs, it's like you're likely to win the whole thing. And the Penguins, especially I feel, is if they just get in, they're fine. Whether they're the last seed or you know, the fourth seed or whatever. You know what I mean? And I think when they won the last few Stanley Cups, they weren't the top overall seed, if I'm correct. I think it was actually during the middle of the season, you know, when they had to make a coaching change or something, they come back and they win it. I'm not, not necessarily uh, last right. year. But it's like if you could just get in there and play hot, just by the nature of the sport and there being so many right, games. Like just catch lightning in a bottle is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Now, obviously, with uh, football, or especially, you know, when uh, the BCS was around in college football, every game was a playoff, basically. And you had to show up every single game. And um, I think, you know, ultimately, that in a way can kind of turn at least the casual fans off from a sport maybe such as baseball or uh, even hockey because there's no sense of urgency. And what did I just say? If you could get hot going into the playoffs, no matter what seed you're in, you're probably going to be in good shape. And, you know, with baseball, 162 games, uh, man, that's a lot to follow. And with the Pirates management, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, especially with the Pirates management. They're asking fans to invest and put their trust in them. And 
to invest their emotions over such a long period, and they really haven't, and they haven't given fans at all a reason lately hmm. for us fans to make that sacrifice. And Angela, if I'm correct, wasn't it one of uh, Bob Nutting's newspaper companies uh, was boycotting advertisements for him? Did I hear that correctly, Angela? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's because everybody's so disillusioned with everything that they've done, and um, you know you can't trade everybody away and still think that all oh, people are going to feel feel good about this. Right. Well, you know, I I am a. I'm a Pittsburgh fan till I die. I have seen casual, no, not casual, I've seen really hardcore True and Blue Pirates fans lately saying that they're not going to go to the games anymore, that they're not going to give one cent to the Pirates organization. They don't want to support nothing. And, you know, I have mixed feelings on that. I mean, for the most part, I agree. But at the same time, sometimes you just want to take your kids and the family to the ball game. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not going to get on anybody's case for being pro or against that um, line of thought. You know, if you want to boycott the Pirates, if you don't want to support them because you feel like they're not giving their best for a product, I'm okay with that. But if you also want to take your kids or uh, you know just want to go to a game casually with your friends or family, I'm okay with that too. How do you feel about that, Angela? Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you you have to... You have to vote with your dollars. And for the person at the top to want all the dollars and not share the ability to have a, 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 a team that's competitive, now we now you have issues. And and you know, I'll tell you right here, there's some good baseball being played in the North County League and we're gonna televise those games and have commentary on those games since Going the pirate games is going to be that costly. Right, right. Well, it's just sad that it's come to this, you know, because I feel like Pittsburgh is a baseball town, and you know, as evidenced by their history when they were winning you know, the games, they were selling out and things like that. But I guess we could both agree, Angelo, it is what it is, but not what it should be. There you go. But I hope all of you enjoyed this episode of the Cedar Sports Corner. Um, and I hope anyone that was uh, watching the game from Philadelphia stayed safe. Uh, I just, I still think that's ridiculous to riot your city after they went. Uh, Tear it up. Yeah, let's flip over cars. They're the fans are flipping over cars. Like, come on. I know that's not all fans are doing this, but anyway. Um, again, thank you all for uh, tuning in, and I hope all of you enjoyed the rest of your week. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program.